Hello everyone and welcome to our DVC cooking show. My name is Ben Malin and I will be taking us forward this week solo. Uh, this is a continuation of our cooking shows here in DVC Villas. We are in the Animal Kingdom Lodge one bedroom this week and we are going back to day one of the Magic Kingdom, October 1st, 1971 to the Town Square Cafe, which is now known as Tony's Town Square. And if you like these videos that we're doing so far and you want to see more of them, they are absolutely thank you to our sponsors at dvcresellemarket.com, dvcrentalstore.com, and of course monerafinancial.com. Any of your DVC needs, they are going to take care of you. But for this week, let's talk about the Town Square Cafe. They had something back on October 1st, 1971 called the Town Square Chopped Steak. And you could get this for $2.50. Uh, the Town Square Chopped Steak reads as a broiled chopped sirloin with spiced fruit, sliced tomato, and cottage cheese. Combo that sounded pretty weird to us, but we wanted to go for it. So what we did is just got everything together. Like the other recipes that we've done, this is pretty simple. So it was not hard to buy from Publix. The tools that we need are right here in the villa. And with a couple of hiccups, which are going to happen when you're cooking anyway, it still didn't take maybe more than 45 minutes to do all of this. So for the, the Town Square Chopped Steak, this was just something that we read off of the menu. This is not a recipe, so this is going to be inspired by day one. And what you've got are, again, not a lot of ingredients. You need your steak and your salt and your pepper, obviously. Butter, garlic, and rosemary to get things going. Spice fruit? thought that was a weird one, but we went with pineapple and we're going to be seasoning that with brown sugar, cinnamon, and a little bit of black pepper. We went ahead and did the sliced tomato, but we're going to roast the tomato and the cottage cheese we did leave in. I think that this is something to where you can kind of make your own decision as you're cooking, what your kids like, what you like. But to get straight into it, when you're getting that steak out, you want it to come down from being so cold. So if you can put it down on your counter with salt and pepper, let that sink in a little bit, you're going to get a juicier steak. On your stove top, heat your, heat, your, heat your stove, heat your pan until that water is sizzling just a little bit without smoke coming up. Put your, bar, your butter, your garlic, and your rosemary down. You don't really need to go higher than medium heat on this. You'll see that we ran out of room in the pan, but you'd ideally keep them in with your steak. Get your steak searing on that, on that heat. If it's not making a sound effect, you're not going to be happy because that steak is going to be overcooked. Once it's had enough time to get color on one side, flip it to the other side just long enough to sear. Sear it on all sides and then try as much as you can to get that steak on top of your garlic and your rosemary and get it in the oven. Based on how you like your steak, that can be anywhere from five to 10 minutes at 350 and that steak is ready to come out. We went ahead because of how little room we had and we put the tomatoes in with the steak. We found that the tomatoes didn't cook quickly enough so we ended up searing them a little more at the end. And these things can happen. It's not gonna be perfect and that's okay. What matters is that it still didn't take a lot of effort one way or the other. And we were pretty happy with how things came out. As far as the spiced pineapple goes, we put the pineapple into a bowl with the sugar, the cinnamon, and the black pepper, and just mix that around until it clearly looks good. We put it on a, we put it on a bit of a griddle, we space them out, and then that broils in the oven. Here in the villa, it already listed at 500 degrees, but in most cases, pressing your boil button is going to take care of that. Four minutes on one side, three minutes on the other side. Spoon that extra stuff over the top before it goes in that second time and pull it and it's ready. And with that pineapple broiling while your steak is resting, all those flavors are going to be in that steak and everything's going to come together really nicely like you'll see in our shot. So at this point, I want to go ahead and bring our producer in, give a little dining review of this. We've had Drake Shadwell behind the camera today, and since we don't have Pete here, Drake's our guy. So he's going to tell you what he thought of what we cooked today. 
Ben mentioned I had the good fortune of being the producer for today. So that means that while everyone else was running around, um, I got to have this steak with the roasted tomatoes and the roasted garlic and a dash of rosemary on the side to bring it together and a cottage cheese spread to go on top. And what really stood out to me is when I like bit into the steak is I got that taste of rosemary. I wasn't expecting it to be strong isn't the right word because it wasn't overpowering. I still tasted the slight seasoning. I still tasted the meat, but I just could tell that it had been baked with the rosemary. And I don't know if that's because I happened to be shoving a camera right next to it when it was happening. So I knew, um, but I, I definitely got that taste. And um, the roasted tomato was really good with that salt and pepper, just adding a little bit of flavor. I probably should have put a little more cottage cheese on mine um, and then salted it after the cottage cheese. I think that would have made that flavor pop a little bit more, but that's on me. The standout though for me were those that was that spiced fruit, was that spiced pineapples with that cinnamon. The, the I think, yeah, Ben could tell you better than I could, but I think it's because of like, broiling them that it took some of the like overpowering acidity out of the pineapple and replaced it with that cinnamon and that sweetness and so you had this really nice balance between the two and i wish that he'd cut up an entire pineapple and made just an entire just an entire thing of those because i could have ate those for the rest of the day um the steak was delicious really feeling really filling and um, I'm just I'm just really happy that I got to be the one to film this one. <laughs> so Ben is going to wrap this up and tell you a little bit at, here at the end. But uh, yes, I absolutely recommend you whip this up in your own DVC kitchen. And that's it. That was the Town Square Chopstick from day one at Walt Disney World. We had a lot of fun and that pineapple was seriously so good. Everything we got from Publix, not a lot of ingredients, cooked only with what we have. This was an easy ride. Maybe even with the hiccups, it took 45 minutes. So there you have it, simple as that. If there is anything that you are missing from your previous trips to Walt Disney World that you'd like to see us recreate here in the villas, please let us know in the comments, any suggestions that you have, and feel free to reach out to me personally if you have any questions on anything I've done, or if you want to um, look into any of the baked goods that I am selling. It is havenbakeryllc at gmail.com. That is my business email. It is my personal business. I'm local here in Orlando. And I would be happy to answer any questions, help you in any way I can. But mostly, we really want to see what you think. We want to see what you want from us. And we're going to be happy to tackle it with you. But that's it for us this week. Have a great week, folks. Bye-bye.